<laughs> you look like you have a bit of trouble following that. A little bit, I'll be alright. Oh shit, yeah, blue card, let's go. <laughs> Back in the days of cowboys and guns that only shot six bullets, US Marshals do the only thing stopping assorted arseholes from ruining the days of hard-working Americans. Amongst Old West Marshals, Frank M. Canton is amongst the most famous, partially because he spent the first half of his life on the other side of the law. So tell me more about this amazing man. Well, according to history books with pictures of cowboys on the front, Canton spent most of his formative years drifting across the American South, generally acting like a huge jeb end, robbing banks and rustling people's cattle under the name Josiah Horner. After shooting a soldier dead and injuring another during an argument, thus completing the trifecta of Old West crimes, Canton, then Horner, escaped the custody of a Texas Ranger and moved to Nebraska. So what did he do in Nebraska? In Nebraska, Canton decided to change his name from Horner to, well, Canton, after he realised that, you know, outlaws back in those days tend to have, like, you know, a shorter lifespan than a suicidal mayfly, and dedicated his life, you know, to the law, vowing to never commit another crime as long as he lived. After adopting the alias Frank M. Canton, the reformed outlaw decided to begin making amends to the people of America by dedicating his life to making the lives of criminals as difficult and bullet-filled as possible. So how did he go about doing this? By becoming one of the most ball-busting enforcers of law ever seen in the Old West. First by becoming a deputy marshal, and then by agreeing to become a sheriff in Johnson County, Wyoming. Each one coming obviously with its own perks, and that being the ability to shoot criminals dead. You know, as they did back then. That's, that's how crime worked back then. Do you not know that? I know. How, how many documentaries about it? I've watched, like, at least one. Yeah. And played Red Dead. Yeah. Oh my god, I was so bad in that. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a criminal in, oh my god, oh. I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know what that game is. All I can tell people watching at home, and you Brad, is that my version of the main character absolutely had an obsession with shooting people in the testicles. Also, apparently his horse like occasionally just flew into orbit. One of my favourite glitches is in Oblivion. Have you played Oblivion? Uh, one. The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. There is a glitch now, basically, if... A shopkeeper doesn't see you pick up an item, they don't know you've stolen it. I believe in Skyrim, the famous one in that is, you can put a basket over their head. Maybe you're looking for something particular. But in Oblivion, it's a lot harder to do, because obviously there's not, like, many, the physics aren't as good, but my thing is you can just punch objects into the corner of a room and pick them up that way. Greetings. So that's how I used to get like, oh no, I need to get like some leather armor. Let's just go into like, you know, Rame like, um, what's it now? Oh, something like Radiant Raiments, whatever it's called. I'm just gonna punch all these like leather boots into a car and steal them. Imagine if you were working at Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this coming, don't you? <laughs> it's like, you just see a guy. What's he doing with that bog roll? You just see a guy just like doing like fucking... Punching it into a car. Just doing like three hit combos to like a tin of beans. <laughs> During his tenure as the fucking law, Canton arrested countless criminals and shot dozens more, earning him a reputation as one of the most feared and respected lawmen in the entire country, which of course earned him the scorn of many a criminal. What did these criminals do to try and stop him? Well, they tried to kill him, which went about as well as you'd expect, considering we're now talking about Canton and not those unnamed criminals who tried to kill him. A good example of that is a criminal who tried to assassinate Canton when he was walking to go to dinner, I believe, and they snuck up behind him and shot at him from almost point blank range when his back was turned and the bullet missed. Because even bullets knew not to mess up Frank Canton's fucking coat. So you can find the, like, the famous picture of him, he looks suave as balls in that picture. It's like no, like no bullet is gonna mess that coat up. No bullet's gonna have like, you know, so I imagine he'd do the thing where he'd pull his own gun out and shoot the bullet. It's like for a rest, like you've damaged the thing, he'd arrest the bullet and put it on trial and all that shit. So after his bullet mates, Canton, without missing a beat, drew his own gun, turned around and shot the guy who was gonna assassinate him, dead. One shot, done. That was it. And, like, and stuff like that like, earned him a reputation as like, a guy you did not fuck with. It's like, a guy had the element of surprise and a gun, and they lost. Do you reckon it'd be like special edition New Hawk, where his head just moves slightly out of the way? They didn't do that, did they? Have you not seen that? I have not seen that, no. I've seen like the one... Solo thing. 
Oh, they, they digitally made his head yeah, they move. They digitally made his body move a few inches to the side, so it looked. Oh, like fuck's sake! Have you not seen this? It? No, it's horrific. No, one. I didn't know. I know. I thought the worst ones were to put the rocks in front of R two D two. Have you not seen that? Where R two D two hides from the stormtroopers in A New Hope that are looking for him. They CGI'd in more rocks, so he's more hidden. <laughs> But it creates a big plot hole of how did he move those rocks out of the way? So how did he get back out? Because those rocks are blocking him in. Or the one that made like Ewoks blink. That was a scary one. And obviously then there's a classic of bringing Hagen Christensen in. I want to see Ewan McGregor in it. And I want to see Young Yoda. Have you seen Smooth Yoda? Smooth Yoda? Have you seen Smooth Yoda? Oh my oh. god, it's a thing that's going around on the internet. People have used like a filter to make Yoda smooth. <laughs> well, yeah, like putting Smooth Yoda. No, you know what, Brad? You know what? You've not done this in a while, and I've had a drink. Oh, good god. Can you, for me, when Agent Christians comes back, can you Photoshop in young Ewan McGregor and then also <laughs> Smooth Yoda? <laughs> so they all get, they've all got their younger selves back. So go on, give me another story about Cantor. Um, there are many about him, but I'll tell you perhaps my favourite one, which is where he was hunting down a group of criminals with a posse, and the, like, the criminals, knowing that they were being hunted by like, you know, the old-time equivalent of fucking Robocop, hold themselves up inside of a cabin and began shooting bullets at Canton and the posse, injuring at least one of them. So what did Canton do? He did what any self-respecting lawman in that situation would do, and he walked over to a nearby wagon, set it on fire, and pushed it down a nearby hill towards the cabin. I feel like the fire bit was unnecessary. Why would you say on fire? Why not set it on fire at that point, though? <laughs> it's like, if you're all going to do something unthinkably badass, fire can only, like, you know, add to the badassness. So at that point, those criminals knew they were fucked, but they knew they were doubly fucked. Like, if you look out the window, you see a giant, like, wagon, like, full of supplies heading towards you, and you see Frank Canton at the top, like, doing that. He's doing that thing from the movies, like, I fucking, oh, you're mine. He's like, he's like, staring holes through you. You know he fucked. But when the wagon is aflame, at least you know, uh, okay, I'm gonna get taken out by Frank Canton, but this story might get talked about by some dickhead in the future in a YouTube video, because it's so metal. And you know what? It did. So, as you can imagine, that wagon smashed through the front of that cabin, set everything on fire, the criminals run out, some of whom are probably on fire, and what does just Cannon and his posse do but shoot them with every bullet in the world and possibly some extra ones they had lying on the floor? And oh, you know what? Problem fucking solved. That's like the, the true crime way of solving a crime. Do you know, like, if you play true crime? Yeah. If you don't play true crime, basically, you solve crimes. You're a police officer, but for some reason, just shooting the criminal, no matter how minor an offence, always counts as you solving the case. So, ah, oh, yes, we've got someone who's uh, been speeding. Speeding, you say? Better pull out my, <laughs> better pull out my fully upgraded like Desert Eagle and just shoot the gas tank so he flips over and explodes. Ah, then you get a little thing about like 50 points. Crime solved. So, yeah, he's not, why would you commit crime in that city? Try laundering that, bitch. Of interest, did Canton's criminal past ever catch up with him? It didn't, much to his own surprise. Obviously, he got really, really famous, and he expected someone somewhere to recognise him, and no one ever did. So I think after about 20 years of being a lawman, he went back to Texas to confess all of his crimes to the governor. And the governor was like, I don't believe you. You're not like this Josiah Horner. He was a dickhole. You're Frank Canton, the kick-ass sheriff who like dives through windows throwing two pistols at once. You're too awesome. And he had to think, no, I am that guy. I feel so guilty. I've tried to make amends by like serving the law, but I don't feel like I've been punished enough. And the governor's like, Canton, we cool. <laughs> and just pardoned him. Because so obviously like, he dedicated his, like, so much of his life to put himself in like, mortal danger every day to so, like, enforce the law. The governor's like, you know what? We're good. Don't do it again. And he just continued living that. He lived out the rest of his life. He's like, you know, an unthinkable badass. So you're pardoned for every crime? Yeah. Including shooting that guy. So I guess that guy wasn't quite happy about that. No, no justice for him. No. It's, uh, unless you count all the criminals that like, got killed in his name. I guess it's a pretty badass way to go, isn't it? I'm saying if someone like, you know, ran me over a car and they felt so bad about it, they had to go run over criminals. 
It's like, you know, but every time they run over the criminal, they drop a picture of me in a rose. I'll be all right with that. Whoever shot Batman's parents, like, they're a hero. If you think about it, if you use that, the same logic like that governor was using there. Well, think about all the, think about all the criminals Joe Chill has stopped by proxy. He's a hero in that universe. <laughs> Usually when you drink, you tell us a story. We haven't had a story for a while. We haven't, have we? Um, have I ever told the story on this channel of um, the five-way slap? I don't think so. The leg oh god. The legendary five-way slap. Right. So, I think I mentioned my old dog Penny on the channel before. Put the picture of me with Penny. Because I like that picture. Um, basically, there was a thing me and my little brother used to do. Whenever we made sandwiches, we'd get like a slice of ham or chicken or something like that. You know, the sliced meat. Yeah. And what um, we do is we give Penny a slice. And she was so well trained that she would not take food from your hand too, so it said, nice ways. So what my brother did once, just as a, like, because he got a laugh, he, just went, he got the ham and he went, and he lightly slapped it across like, by accident, and she didn't grab it. And we thought that was so funny. Because she was so ready for that ham and so well trained, she went, <laughs> and, and then he said, nice ways. He went, doom, snatched the ham out of his hand. So one day, like I said, like, the next time I made a sandwich, I thought to myself, I went, I got, the, I got the ham and I went, tsh, tsh. and before I got the second slap, she snapped it out of my hand. And that started a game with Penny Ware. Basically, once you started the slap, she had to try and grab it out of your hand. <laughs> I remember one day, my brother got really big, he got really big in his britch and he picked up a slice of my mum's special top silver side of beef that she spent a fucking fortune on. And he went to the fridge and he went, he picked it out like that and he went, Penny! Come in here! And he went, he got it all ready. Like he was about to whip with a towel and he went, and got five slaps off. And then she grabbed the, the beef and said, yeah! And that forever became known as the legendary five way slap. Because <laughs> he somehow managed to rub the meat on the dog's face five times. Before. <laughs> if people, I, I hope that doesn't make me sound like really mean. Like, we weren't doing it, it was just a funny thing, it was like, you know when you get like dog toys and stuff like that, you like rub it on your dog's nose? Yeah. But like, it was just the idea, we just like, the idea, whenever we had a slice of ham, we just your dog and just go, tsh, tsh. Right. the old little glove slap with a piece of meat. There's a lot of dogs in your life at the moment, you ever thought of trying to beat the five-way slap? I don't think I could. No. The five-way slap will never be topped. Do you, reckon, do you reckon the quality of the meat contributed? It might have been, yeah. It's, 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 Penny knew that's some good quality beef, Just so she's got savor. she's got to save the scent while she like, rips it out of your fucking hand. But she was such a well trained. She had this thing as well where she nibbled your fingernails. She was taught not to bite, but she would bite. So what she do is so you go like when you're in a play fight, she like she do nip and nip and nip at your clothes, and then as soon as she caught skin, what she do? She go na 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 na. That was it. It was so hilarious. So you do think like you just get the quilt on the floor and you put your arm under the quilt and go oh, 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 oh. What a well-trained dog. Man, the, the legendary and like five-way slap of Kurosawa. That you can't stop it, man. It's so good. She's just like the pose that he did and everything. You got like a proper like ninjutsu pose. Like, wah, 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 wah. Were you present for this? I was present. I witnessed the five-way yeah. slap, yes. Did it change your life? It did, yeah. I hope people don't misconstrue and think I was beating my dog. It's like, it was a very light slap with a piece of meat. It was a, a game we used to play with her. And she did enjoy it because obviously she got a big giant piece of meat at the end of it. We call it legendary because no one, but, no one believes it happened. But I saw it. I, wit I witnessed the legend. Oh God, it squeezed me. I kind of wish I had some ham now and I could try on you. <laughs> Just slap me with ham. Great Just video. slap me with ham. Great end to the video. No, it's not. No. My cameraman slaps a uh, horse with a big bit of meat. Oh, what have we done here? <laughs> I make the sexual innuendo jokes on this channel. <laughs>